Good morning. I'm Beth Simony. I'm the Associate Director for Bioimage Analysis at the Bird Institute in the United States. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be invited to Global Bioimaging. I'm sorry I couldn't make it there in person, um, but I would like to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what we're doing towards training the trainers in bioimage analysis. Um, so very often when we're taking microscope images, it's to do measurements of a very particular phenomenon. And so using image analysis all throughout, not just at the very end of our experiment, but in the cycle of when we're optimizing sample preparation and image acquisition and choosing which microscope we're going to use, doing image analysis at every point along the way allows us to make sure that when we go to take our final data set, that actually we can measure the thing that we care about the most and was the reason we were doing this experiment in the first place. Um, and so we really hope that uh, we can convince more, especially beginning microscopy users and people who are learning about microscopy, that image analysis isn't just something you do at the very end of an experiment, but is something you do along the way. Now, a lot of people learn microscopy from their local core director. Um, the problem being that when we have surveyed, um, when we've worked with bioimaging North America and Latin America bioimaging and had core staff and core directors come in and talk to us, um, only about half of facilities offer most of the kinds of image analysis help um, that we ask them about. And some of them say that they offer none, of, no image analysis help at all, uh, not even access to things like software licenses. Um, and about three quarters of participants in all of the categories said that they would want to offer that category. So people want to offer some help with image analysis. Nobody that we've ever surveyed said that they wanted to provide zero image analysis support. So the people who are our trainers for so much of microscopy actually aren't able to be our trainers for bioimage analysis. So why actually is that? So when we ask them, um, time is a thing that comes up as well as expertise. Um, Microscopy core facility folks are incredibly busy and in juggling a lot of things and wearing a ton of different hats. And so the time to generate the experience for themselves so that they can then teach something, as well as the time just in the week to sort of add another couple hours of to their workload of, oh, yes, and now I'm going to teach people how to use ImageJ or Cell Profiler, is simply time that they just don't have. Uh, the bioimage analysis specialist is sort of where this comes in. Certainly since new bias started um, in the 2010s, um, it really brought together bioimage analysis as a career and as this is something that someone can do as their full-time job. Um, but certainly there are a lot fewer bioimage analysis specialists than there are microscopy cores or universities or institutions doing microscopy. So we need to make a lot more of these people if they're going to be the solution to our problem and if they become the trainers who then go on to train other people. And so we've actually started doing this as a postdoctoral training program where we take amazing wet lab trained scientists and teach them how to do programming and how to do image analysis workflow creation. Um, these are the 11 amazing people who so far, seven who've gone through the program and four who are still in it. And so why actually do it this way? Why take great wet lab biologists and teach them computer science? Um, now, certainly there are amazing people who are bioimage analysts who started as computer scientists and then become bioimage analysts. So it can work in either direction. Um, but in our experience, a lot of times when people come to you, and I, I'm sure those of you who teach uh, microscopy have had the same experience, where the way that the experiment has been done till now is simply not right. Something has been done that is fixable but isn't right yet and so being able to tell a person like hey this image looks out of focus or this image looks like you used the wrong secondary or the wrong fixation technique um, is really valuable in a bioimage analyst to be able to give specific feedback about how the image could be made better and what is possible to achieve for a particular kind of microscopy um, we're a totally computational lab we don't actually have a microscope facility so we can't take our software engineers and shove them on a microscope for six months so for us starting with people who already have that experience we can then teach them software engineering and image analysis workflow creation so we modeled our program pretty heavily on jennifer waters at harvard medical school's uh, advanced microscopy fellows program where we follow essentially an apprenticeship model people work on individual image analysis projects, as well as tool creation, and they gain practical experience in what the professional job of an image analyst is um, over the course of sort of one to three years. One thing I want to note, um, these apprenticeship models are great when they work, and certainly Jennifer's program works, and we believe ours does too. If you're thinking of trying this kind of model, 
um, you need to make sure you leave plenty of time for actual training so that people can actually develop these skills. And in addition to this benefiting them, it also really benefits the whole community. And because people who have just learned a new skill tend to be very good at teaching it because they just learned it. They understand what the pain points were and learning it. And so the bioimage analysts in our training program have worked on a ton of papers about tool development, benchmarking, protocols, needs assessment, all the things that are what wet lab biologists need to learn. And so even though uh, at that point, they are in a training program, they have become the trainers, and they are working to train others. And so certainly in the future, we are hoping to sort of keep this program going ourselves, but we'd love to promote this as a model other places. Um, if you are a bioimage analysis facility or you have some bioimage analysis in your facility, think about using this as a model that you can take somebody, you can train them in what they're doing, and they can then sort of train others in your facility, and they can create great training materials as well. Um, and once you have those people, once people see what is possible, we think it's going to sort of create more groundswell in the community that image analysis is awesome and necessary and that it should be funded. But if you're saying, cool, well, I can't wait, you know, 10 years while you go and train an army of more people and you want to start offering these sorts of trainings yourself, um, here's my sort of train the trainers in terms of what could you do to help uh, improve the image analysis training you offer in your facility sort of right now. Uh, this is a paper that came out earlier this year based on a 2022 survey we ran with uh, the RMS and DINA about needs for bioimage analysis in the community. Um, and there's a lot of data on there. It's all free and available to you, including a lot of breakdowns of the graphs I'm going to show. But when we ask people who say they spend most of their time doing microscopy, not image analysis, how image analysis tools could be made better for them, they really want videos. They want things to be friendly. They want demonstration of things. And so videos and office hours are the two major categories that are much more popular with people who describe themselves as low computationally skilled and people who describe themselves as high computationally skilled. And if you're and what the tool developers say they need in return and what helps them to make good tools when you ask them what could users be doing. Um, communication, just simply telling tool developers when you run into a bug, what is the bug? Sending them an image and saying, this is the image that caused the bug. Um, communication and just feedback is so critical for making some of these tools because we simply can't solve problems that we don't know exist. Um, so if you can promote resources like the image.sc forum, which I'll talk about in just a second, um, and convince users that this feedback is really valuable to getting their problem solved, but also to sort of making the tools better. Um, that's what we think is one of the most important messages to get out there. And again, there's a lot of things on there in terms of what people are excited about in terms of format, in terms of topic. I definitely recommend if you're going to be creating bioimage analysis training to check that out and sort of use that to guide um, how you're planning to, to convey this and what information you're planning to convey. But like I said, if there's nothing else that you teach folks about bioimage analysis, please teach them that forum.image.sc is a thing that exists. It's got more than 60 open source image analysis software tools where people answer questions. You can post an image and say, this is my image, this is my question, help. And some people can guide you to the best tool. And there's tens of thousands of answered posts on there already that you can search. So somebody else may have already answered the question that you are hoping to find the answer to. And for helping people get started, again, this is a resource we made with Bioimaging North America. Um, we really hope that bioimagingguide.org is helpful. So this is an online resource um, associated with a, a paper we put out in PLOS Biology earlier this year that's designed to help people figure out what don't they know about what's needed to do uh, quantitative microscopy and to do really high quality microscopy. We're not trying to teach everything ourselves, we're just trying to point people at what they need to go learn more about. And doing it online as a Jupyter book gives us access to a lot of really fun functionality that we think is actually really helpful. So these are searchable. You can have drop downs that show you information about particular topics. You can put a note in the margin with extra material and again, sort of make it so that not all of the information is presented at once. And so we hope this is useful. We hope your users enjoy it. And the feedback we've gotten is that for beginner materials in particular, more so than advanced materials, having this in multiple languages would actually be really helpful. Um, so we've been working to do this for several languages now. Um, we have our first language, which is Czech, that was completed earlier this month. So you can now access this whole guide in Czech. 
Um, and if you don't see the language here that uh, you would like this book to be in, and or if you want to help with one of the languages that isn't complete, please do reach out to me. And so with that, I just want to thank the amazing members of my team who have made all these amazing tools and educational materials, um, the folks who funded it, and you for your attention. Thanks so much.